Bethesda's QuakeCon 2020 has confused me. And I know some of you will immediately jump to, well, you were saying we might see Starfield there, you just overhyped yourself, of course you were disappointed. And although, yeah, I saw some of the new reveals we got as kind of lackluster or disappointing, it's not even really that so much that I want to talk about in this video, but more so how I'm finding it genuinely perplexing as to which content we saw at QuakeCon, or rather, which new content we didn't see at QuakeCon. Because even though barely anything was shown seemingly or at least reportedly as of right now there is still a lot coming out from bethesda titles in the second half of 2020 so in this video i want to expand on all of that kind of give my rather perplexed reaction to this recent digital event but firstly we should probably establish what actually was shown or presented at quakecon and in all fairness technically quakecon is not over but what happened today was the start of it specifically the quakecon welcome which was touted as being the one spot where we'd get some new teases or surprises prizes around future games. And if you look at the schedule, it was really the only time or opening for something like that to take place. For the rest of QuakeCon, which is still going on over the next couple of days, it's going to be very community focused. Things like speed runs, highlighting things from YouTubers, a cooking show, or even a Fallout based game show, which I actually got to participate in. I think a lot of you guys will really enjoy that one. It was very fun to film. And although I'm honestly really excited to watch some of those streams, I think some of them will be quite funny in particular. I'm also confused as to what we got during during this welcome. So what did we get? ESO was one of the only games that really had a somewhat significant presence as far as new reveals go. ESO is currently in the middle of an almost year-long DLC or expansion cycle, and we got a new in-game gameplay trailer for one of the next segments of that. I don't really follow ESO too closely, but I know a lot of people are very excited for this, and this is actually good. It was kind of the one significant or real reveal we got during this. Separate from that, Fault 76 was technically there and that the project lead did have a segment where he talked about the game. And although it definitely looked cool, and if you were none the wiser, it probably would look like they actually were showing off some pretty cool stuff in the background. What they were showing off in the background was actually a trailer that came out a little over a month ago. They verbally mentioned a couple of things, new ways to explore and experience dungeons with daily ops, although we kind of already knew that. The one thing that was genuinely new, it seems like the season two of the battle pass will be called either the arms race or the armor ace. I don't know, here's the clip. I could not understand what he said. Plus the season two challenge pass, armor ace. And although that is the theme and likely will be the kind of cosmetics we could get via that, I don't actually know what he's saying and even still, I don't know what an armor ace would even entail. We found out you could pet the dog in Ghostwire, which is cool. I honestly wasn't expecting much from Ghostwire, so not too disappointed in this reveal. We get some Doom Eternal updates. They described several new features coming to the game, new maps, new demons, a ranked multiplayer mode, a new map for the multiplayer mode, and a trailer for a trailer, which I don't know, maybe it's just me, but one of my least favorite things are our announcements for upcoming announcements, especially like this. What we saw of that 5 to 10 second trailer looks awesome, it just is so little. Deathloop didn't really reveal much in the way of new stuff, there was no new gameplay, it was just reusing gameplay from the PlayStation event reveal, and they described some things like smooth frame rate or some background on crafting the setting. And technically we did get some images slash videos of kind of building that world, but it's not like it really revealed anything new. Overall I honestly liked the welcome, I just wish there was more information. I liked how it was pretty informal and we had some of those bloopers at the end. I thought that was quite cool. And frankly, you can't really go wrong with having a bunch of dogs on your stream. I mean, who doesn't like that? The reason I found this to be so perplexing or just odd is one, the history QuakeCon has had, especially over the past few years. Although this is definitely an odd year when it comes to digital events, QuakeCon in the past has had significant debuts of content or new information dropping. And you might just be like, well, of course they didn't show it. Maybe Bethesda doesn't really have much to show. But no, it doesn't really seem like that's the case. Doom Eternal right now is slated to get an expansion as well as a big update at some point in 2020. Deathloop is reportedly coming out in December of 2020. And Fallout 76 has a ton of stuff still yet to come out in 2020 that we know basically nothing about. An all new quest line at some point in fall. In winter, almost a seemingly expansion or Wastelander sized extension of that quest line, including NPCs, quests, and companions coming to the area. And along the way, new limited time events, new features, new ways to build at your camp, and even two new seasons. So all of that content is coming out apparently before the end of the year. On the Fallout 76 side, I think a lot of us are like, really? You're gonna fit that all in? I don't know. 
but even with something like Deathloop, apparently this game is just four months away and they couldn't even prepare something like gameplay or some more significant reveals for QuakeCon or even just simply an actual release date for the game, something more concrete than the month. Doom has got to be one of the most perplexing and surprising to me, but in a way somewhat revealing for the rest of this. If you guys don't remember, Doom was actually really revealed at QuakeCon two years ago. During E3 2018, we got this teaser trailer, which honestly doesn't show much. It acknowledges the existence of the game, shows you a bunch of Doom related things, but outside of that, it's not like you'd really understand the identity of Doom Eternal or really what made the game so great. And in fact, we got that giant gameplay reveal, 25 minutes of gameplay at QuakeCon 2018. And I think it was with that reveal of gameplay that made many people really fall in love with the idea of this game and really get excited for it. And I highlight that because it does show a fairly significant transition between then and now when it comes to QuakeCon. At that point, they were clearly ready and willing to show off a big chunk of their new AAA game. They thought QuakeCon was a suitable place to do so. Yet this time around, we got a trailer for the full trailer. They wouldn't even give us the full trailer this year, but rather it'll be at the end of this month for opening night live as a part of Gamescom, which okay, that's fine. It is kind of weird in that Bethesda never has really had a major presence at Gamescom. They're almost always there or have a presence, but we oftentimes don't see major reveals at that event. But then lastly, what may actually be the most confusing is with Fallout 76. They clearly have a lot more to tell us about Fallout 76 and its future. I for one was really expecting some kind of new trailer around the rest of the DLC apparently coming out this year. As when it comes to Steel Dawn, we literally know nothing. Whether it be data mines or even official statements from the company, we just basically know the name that it'll involve the Brotherhood of Steel. It seemed like QuakeCon would have been that opportunity to give maybe a release date or just an overall idea of what some of this new content will be. Even with things like Fractured Steel, which again is apparently only four months or even less away now. Steel Dawn probably only being a month or two away, assuming it does hold its current fall release date. And I think this is most surprising because in particular with Fallout 76 and Doom, QuakeCon has always been a pretty big event for those games. Fallout 76 of course has only been there twice now, but in those two years we got big reveals, some gameplay in 2018, last year we got a ton of Wastelanders based concept art, but also really the big part was the info dump. The developers talking about what we could expect from the upcoming release, whether it be Wastelanders or originally the initial game release, and there was a lot to dig through with all of that. It's almost like this year Bethesda took a different approach with QuakeCon to actually forego releasing or dropping new info at an event that they historically have released quite a bit of new info at. And frankly, I'm not entirely sure why. Perhaps Fallout 76 will just release its info at a one-off Inside the Vault article one weekend. That's how they released the last trailer. Perhaps that's how we'll find out about the next one. And maybe other things like the release date for Deathloop will be revealed at something like Gamescom or some other event later this month. Maybe the next PlayStation event will contain that larger gameplay trailer. Trailer. But overall, QuakeCon 2020 really surprised me and kind of confused me. Confused me in that despite the fact that Bethesda seemingly has a lot of announcements to still make, we didn't actually really get any of them. In particular, when you consider the fact that this is the only digital event they're actually hosting themselves this year. And even just yesterday, they announced some pretty big news around Doom Eternal and ESO. How both would be getting upgraded versions for Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 for free if you own them on current gen consoles consoles, you can upgrade to next gen for free. And this isn't just crossplay, it actually will entail enhancements for each game. And further, how they are committed to offer free upgrades for current generation console owners of existing Bethesda titles. So perhaps there'll be even more games coming to next gen in the future. I feel like that was actually a pretty big piece of news. Definitely something to get excited for, in particular around Doom Eternal. I'd love to see how good it could look on the next generation of consoles. Yet for one reason or another, they decided to announce it the day before or QuakeCon rather than just waiting to announce it on stage at QuakeCon itself. So overall, I don't want people to take this the wrong way. I'm not personally disappointed in what we saw or what's going on with QuakeCon. I actually think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch some of these community streams, even the Fallout 76 one from earlier today with developers playing one of the upcoming DLC releases. Although we already knew all about that one since it was on the PTS, it was pretty wholesome and just interesting to get the devs' personal takes on development of that DLC. And I think we'll have a lot more of that, a lot more fun content to consume, but when it comes to reveals and announcements, it's almost like Bethesda was like, nah, we're just going to put them at other places, not our own event this year, which in a way is pretty interesting. Either way, as always, again, I thank you for watching. Hopefully you guys found this video informative. I would really love to hear from all of you in the comments down below. Were you surprised or curious as to what happened at QuakeCon or is this exactly what you expected?
expected. It's not like Bethesda hyped it up as being something huge, but to me it did still feel somewhat surprising. As always again, I thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.